Hey guys, the movie we're going to be talking about today is one of my favorite movies and uh, one of, in my opinion, the best comedies ever made. That's right, I'm talking about Dumb and Dumber today. All right, <laughs> this is Dumb and Dumber from 1994 starring Jim Carrey and Jeff Daniels as two morons, two complete idiots, uh, traveling across America to return a briefcase to someone who didn't want the briefcase return. <laughs> so <laughs> that's the story of this movie. And just thinking about it makes me laugh. Um, this movie by the Ferrelli brothers, um, who this was kind of like their breakout movie, released the year that Jim Carrey really put himself on the map. Like, I don't know how he did it. I don't know how he managed to do it. But back in 1994, he did Ace Ventura, Dumb and Dumber, and The Mask. Like... Has there ever been like a more epic kind of like starter year for like an actor? I don't think so. Those are like the same year. And then the year after there was more. There was like another Ace Ventura. There was other stuff. Uh, he'd made a few films before that. Um, he'd done Earth Girls Are Easy, High Strung, uh, Once Bitten. Um, you know, nothing too major. Nothing too major. So this was the big... The first kind of like big movie, right? Uh, along with Ace Ventura. I think Ace Ventura might have come out just a little bit before. So that might have been his big breakout role. But I remember seeing this movie in theaters when it came out. I went to see it with a friend of mine and my grandmother. And my grandmother, okay, who was awesome, um, she, she knew I loved this kind of thing. Okay, she was like, he's gonna like this. It's not my thing. Because my grandmother d didn't like anything vulgar or anything like that. All right, she was just like, you know what? I'll take the kids, they'll enjoy it. We had a blast. Okay, me and my friend were dying of laughter <laughs> the whole time. And after the movie, I remember we were reenacting scenes from the movie. Okay, that's, that's how blown away we were by that movie. And the funny thing is, I remember distinctly my grandmother laughing in the theater. Like, she pretended. She pretended before and after. Like, she, oh, that's not my thing. This is too vulgar. I remember those laughs. Okay, grandma, I remember. I'll never forget you laughing your ass off at Dumb and Dumber with the rest of us. Okay? That movie's hilarious. And it is. Okay, this movie, right off the bat, uh, you know you're in safe hands. Uh, you know that <laughs> it's just Jim Carrey, just the look of the character. He plays Lloyd Christmas, who's this limo driver. Of course, he's, he's, he's an idiot, okay? He's got kind of half of a tooth missing. He's got like a bowl haircut. And he's got Jim Carrey's cartoon face, okay? And, um, and he mistakes Austria for Australia right away. Um, and gets turned down by a girl. He's a loser, right? Uh, they both are. Harry, played by uh, Jeff Daniels, is also like a huge idiot loser. And one of my favorite things to do in this, when I watch this movie, which I've watched many, many times, is to try and figure out who is actually dumber. Who is dumb and who is dumber? And I always get lost because there's all, they always one-up each other in terms of sheer idiocy. Um, so it's actually not that easy. It's like trying to figure out what the birds mean in the birds. You know what I mean? Like, it's not that easy. And Jeff Daniels, dude, Jeff Daniels had such a difficult task in this movie. When you think about it, before that, he wasn't really in comedies. I don't remember one comedy starring Jeff Daniels prior to this movie. I remember him from, like, movies like The Purple Rose of Cairo uh, or Speed, of course. Um, but he's not, like, funny in those. I think he was in Arachnophobia. I'm trying to think what else he was in before. I'd never seen him in a movie before. I saw this movie, and I was like, this guy's a god! This guy is so freaking funny. And it's... Do you know how hard it is to act in a movie next to Jim Carrey and manage to be just as funny as him? That has got to be, like, one of the hardest tasks as a comedian or actor, to you're in a movie and you have to be as funny as Jim Carrey, who is giving it 120%. Uh, Jeff Daniels pulled it off. I don't know how. Just I guess he's just a really, really good actor because he freaking nailed it. 
okay? The movie, of course, is set in Rhode Island because it's the Ferrelli brothers and all their movies <laughs> are set in Rhode Island. These two losers are just kind of like, um, they, they basically get fired the same day. Um, Lloyd, a.k.a. Jim Carrey, gets fired because he drove this woman to the airport. The woman is uh, Lauren Holly, who I believe was got together with Jim Carrey on that movie, right? Um, in real life. Lloyd falls in love with uh, Mary Swanson. There, there's some very funny parts, even just in that sequence, where it's like, why are, you ha why are you driving to the airport? Flying somewhere? She's like, how'd you guess? He's like, well, I saw your luggage. Uh, then I uh, noticed the airline ticket. I put two and two together. Anyway, so he drives her to the airport. She leaves a briefcase there, which turns out to be a ransom because uh, there's this, this kind of gangster guy uh, played by Ma Mike Starr and, um, and a girl as well. There, there's two gangsters who are meant to pick up the briefcase, uh, which is the ransom, so um, Mary Swanson can have her husband back. That's, what the, that's why she left the briefcase in the middle of the airport. Unfortunately, Lloyd notices the briefcase, grabs it just before uh, the gangsters, and tries to bring it back to her. Uh, he goes to the wrong place. On like, he misses the plane. Like he ends up on the runway, um, falls off <laughs> to the, down the jetway, and uh, he gets he brings the briefcase back home. This movie is like really. I feel like it's really remembered for the visual gags because those are the ones that really leap out at you. Whether it's uh, Harry uh, having diarrhea. Uh, or getting his tongue stuck uh, on the ice, or if it's uh, the dream sequence with Lloyd, um, the uh, pretty woman, you know, like spending money scene. Uh, there's so many. There's so many f amazing visual gags in this movie. But the writing, I would say, is even better. Like, it's, it's so on point. Like, it's so... Every line of dialogue, pretty much, is... Um, it's just hilarious. It's so funny. It never misses. The script never misses. And I think that's the real key to this movie's, um, to why this movie did so well. Because you've got, you've got obviously some improv in there. Uh, you've got Jim Carrey at the top of his game. Fine. You've got Jeff Daniels at the top of his game, I would say. Um, fine. Okay. Funny story. Funny idea. Some, uh, some good supporting characters. You have Terry Gar in there somehow. I don't know how she got in there, but she's awesome. Um, yeah, great supporting cast. Um, just a really, really funny movie all around. The only sequence I can think of that doesn't really work is the um, is the scene with Seabass, who is kind of like one of the antagonists of this film, who um, I guess almost rapes Lloyd. And I'm like, whoa, where, why did we get onto such dark territory? What the fuck? I mean, there's some dark humor in this movie. Like one of the characters flat out freaking dies uh harry and lloyd kill a dude uh basically but <laughs> so that's pretty dark there's kidnapping involved but it's not like that's funny like the the death of that character is actually done in a very funny way uh whereas the, this whole kind of like sea bass in the men's bathroom thing it just it's got a bad vibe it's got a bad vibe, this whole sequence, and you're just kind of like, I'm so glad they cut it down from the original. And in fact, you know what? If you ever see like those DVDs of like Dumb and Dumber uncut version, don't bother. Just don't bother. Unless you, you already have like the normal cut of the film. I think the timing and everything is just right in the original cut of the movie. I don't think they needed to do an uncut version. Literally everything they add in uh, is, is bad. Just like it's not, it's not worth it. Like it's a waste. <laughs> it's like when they did the director's cut of um, Donnie Darko. It's just like they added a whole bunch of shit to the movie, and the timing was perfect before, and now the timing is terrible. Why did you do this? Um, so yeah, don't bother with that. There's some extra scenes in there. I would rather just watch the original movie uh, with the scenes the way they were. Okay, and then have, look at the deleted scenes on my own. You know, I don't want to, I don't want to have the deleted scenes in the movie. I don't, I'm not into that. Okay, especially for this movie. Sometimes it can be good. In this movie, it isn't. Harry and Lloyd as characters are pretty vile, <laughs> um, but they are. You can't help but love these guys. I mean, these guys, they don't mean any harm, 
right? That's the main thing. They don't mean any harm. They're, they're just goofballs. They're just dumb, basically. They're, they're like kids. They basically act so juvenile. That they're basically like kids. Like, they've got the mind of a kid. They're so dumb um, in, in such a lovable way. I feel like Lloyd is meaner. I think Jim Carrey's character is, is the meanest of the two because he's willing to do some messed up stuff. Like, he's willing to, like, he sells, like, a dead parakeet to, like, a little disabled child, a little blind child. And it's like, bro, like, that, even Harry is just like, Lloyd, what? <laughs> just can't believe it. Um, and don't get me wrong, Harry has his share of, um, you know, drawbacks as well. Like, he's, you know, he's willing to go out with Mary Swanson, you know, even though he knows... The whole reason why they're there is because Lloyd is into her. But Harry does redeem himself by the end, you know. Lloyd just kind of stays, <laughs> just stays Lloyd the whole time. By the end, he's got like murderous, you know, uh, thoughts. So you get the feeling like this guy's going to do something really wrong one day. He's going to end up in jail somehow. Um, <laughs> but obviously there's a sequel, but the sequel is not on the level of this movie. The sequel lacked a good story, uh, it lacked good timing, uh, it lacked a good writing, unfortunately. Uh, there's some good parts in it. I think Jim Carrey is funny here and there, uh, but it, it's, it's just not on the level of this movie. Like, this is one of those kind of gross-out movies. Like, it kind of brought back the kind of gross-out, vulgar, uh, style of comedy uh, along with Ace Ventura. The thing is, it's not just that what the characters are doing are funny, or what they're saying is funny. It's like the line delivery is everything. Um, you've got even like Harlan Williams, who plays a cop in this movie, who drinks piss. Classic scene. Classic scene. Um, just his delivery of just like <laughs> the kind of physical performance that he gives is just. I remember being in the theater and that the theater erupted at this part. Like this was everybody creamed their pants at this part. Like it was so funny. You know, if anyone's like, oh, you know, comedy has to be smart. You know, it, it doesn't have to. It shouldn't be dumb. You just show them this movie. It's like, oh, yeah. What do you think now? Um, no, this movie is it's genius. I mean, it's, it's one of the best comedies I've ever seen. I don't think I've left this hard at um at many movies okay uh, jim carrey has been lucky to have like a good handful of movies that make me laugh a lot but in terms of like i i think about other comedies in the 90s there's some i really like um but there's none that just like you know just crack me up uh, i think we got we got some good stuff later on with stuff like anchorman and stuff but that was a kind of a new generation of uh, SNL comedians popping up. But um, this movie holds up. Okay, it holds up. There's just that one sequence I think is not that funny. Apart from that, every, everything else is great. There's so many iconic moments. Like, just like Harry and Lloyd dressed in these uh, baby blue orange uh, outfits at this fancy party, uh, killing an owl by mistake. Uh, the soundtrack is awesome in this movie, by the way. Can I just point out how awesome the soundtrack is? Unfortunately, I remember buying the soundtrack back in the day. It didn't have all the songs. It didn't have the mm mm mm, -mm song, which is uh, in a key scene of the movie. It's shocking they didn't have that in there. Um, but, like, the opening song is great. The freaking um, uh, Peter Pumpkin head. You got so many good tracks in there. It's, it's very 90s, okay? Don't get me wrong. It's very, very 90s. Um, but it's very good. The story um, itself is kind of, it's paper thin, okay, I'll grant you that, it's, it's paper thin, but it doesn't need to be any deeper than it is. Um, it's just funny to see Mike Starr have to deal with these guys, um, just constantly just losing it. Um, Mike Starr is a force of nature, like there's the scene where like he punches a dude through like a telephone booth, you buy it, you buy this guy, this guy would do this. This guy's a beast, okay? Um, I, just, I just like to hang out with Harry and Lloyd, okay? Just, just them talking to each other. They have their own kind of sense of logic, which is completely outside of reality. Um, <laughs> they, they have someone show up at their house, kill their bird, and they just think like the bird died of natural causes. 
that those two things, like the person knocking at the door and the bird's head getting like torn off, that's that was accidental. That was a uh, the bird was pretty old. OK, um, just <laughs> ridiculous. And this movie is ridiculous. But dude, I love it. Like the dream sequence where like Jim Carrey is just like uh, Kung Fu fighting the chef and like rips his heart out and shit. Dude, that is another level. Like the, this is the movie is it, it basically becomes a cartoon at times. And it actually became a cartoon eventually. There was um, an animated series, I remember, uh, based on this movie. Yeah, I mean, I, I can't praise this movie enough. It, it's just funny. You know what I mean? Like, there's some comedies you watch them and you're like, okay, this is cute. It's uh, It's got a sentimental side. Uh, it's got some funny parts. This movie is really just funny. But I'll give it that as well. It's got, because it's a road trip movie, right? It's a road movie. It's got this kind of like, it's not, it doesn't have any sentimentality really. It just has this, um, this, good vibe you know what i mean where you're like on the road with your best friend and you're gonna do uh you're gonna go somewhere aspen in this movie uh which is gonna change your life for the better forever obviously the reality of what happens is completely different they end up showing up to aspen um frozen in piss uh <laughs> one to <laughs> one to the other and they don't <laughs> they don't really know what they're doing but um, the whole journey has a good vibe to it, which is why I don't like the bathroom scene because it, it really kills the vibe, takes you to a really dark place that's not funny. Um, and the uh, deleted scene that they put back in later makes it even worse. Um, well, like Harry's like laughing at him. It's just like, I don't like it. But look, definitely check out this movie if you've never seen it before. I would even suggest get a bunch of friends together, get a bunch of beers, okay? Get some Doritos up in here. And just have yourself a kick-ass time. Get the get the DVD, Blu-ray. I don't care how you watch it. Um, pop it on. Big screen. You know, I can't recommend this movie enough. I'm a huge Jim Carrey fan. This is one of my favorite Jim Carrey movies. It's right up there. I think it might be my third favorite Jim Carrey movie. There's Truman Show, Eternal Sunshine. I think it's below that. No, you got Truman Show, Cable Guy. And this movie are my favorite uh, Jim Carrey movies. But um, yeah, Eternal Sunshine is a bit further down. But it's good. It's very good. Anyway, this movie is hilarious. You got to watch it. It's funny as hell. What, what more can I say? It's a comedy. It's funny as hell. I got to give it a good rating, right? That's the whole point of, of the movie. Okay? Um, and obviously, the Freddy Brothers and um, Jim Carrey kind of reunited later on, um, on. Not just on the sequel, but like on... Um, me, myself, and Irene, which was not as good as this movie, but still very good indeed. So I'll, maybe I'll uh, rewatch that very soon as well. I've been rewatching a lot of my favorite movies. Uh, I rewatched a few Jim Carrey movies. And uh, so don't be too surprised if you see a few Jim Carrey movie reviews coming up on the website very soon. Thank you for watching. I will see you guys later.